You all set, gentlemen? Uh, we'll call this meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals to order. Um, a number of issues here today. Um, first is to approve the minutes from the ZBA meeting of April 27, 2010. And do I have uh, a motion to approve those? So move. Second? Second. All in favor? Unanimous. The uh, <coughs> minutes from April 27, 2010 are approved. Do we have, I'm not aware of any old business. Uh, is anyone else on the board aware of any old business that we need to discuss? There being no, no old business, we'll turn to the new business today, which is a uh, request of Philip and Sherry Kaminsky of 8 Gladys Road, tax map U19, lot 53, for a conditional use permit to add an accessory dwelling unit. Mr. and Mrs. Kaminsky, good evening. Um, I'd like to come up and speak your piece first. Well, good evening, and um, I appreciate uh, the opportunity to uh, speak to the ZBA. We uh, have a, a um, son who is disabled, he's currently living with us, and um, his doctors would like uh, him to have some independence. Um, we've tried uh, other living situations where he lives in town in apartments and it hasn't worked out. And they all feel that since we, his, his mother and myself, are his primary caregivers, that the arrangement of having him live um, in our house uh, where he lives now, but in a more independent fashion, uh, would be beneficial. The um, space that we're looking to convert is existing space. It's our existing family room. And we would be adding to that um, a uh, three-quarter bath and a kitchenette. Um, the doors, the existing entry door is there. We would not add any more doors to it. Um, there are two uh, egresses uh, from the family room, one to the backyard, one to the side, and out to the driveway where parking is available. We have a, uh, there's an existing parking pad that has room for four cars, and then there's an 80-foot driveway to a two-car garage. Um, so there's plenty of room for, for cars to to uh, um, meet the requirement for one parking space. The, um, the other things that we would be doing with it is uh, we obviously would uh, insulate outside uh, the walls, uh, re-insulate the roof, um, put on a new roof, and re-shingle it uh, to match uh, the, the house as it is now. Um, <clears throat> as part of it, there currently is a shed at the back of the family room, uh, that storage for tools, uh, used to have a pool house and generator. And that's an existing slab. And in talking with the code enforcement officer, uh, we would have to insulate uh, that slab, but there's a way to do that. And then we would like to put a, a four season exercise room, uh, make it a permanent structure rather than just a shed structure. Um, but it's on an existing slab. The entire the, the entire um, ADU that we're talking about is within existing foundations that are on the property at this point. The, um, the square footage of the proposed um, accessory dwelling unit would be 468 and a half square feet. The um, area of the um, house would, is 1,877 square feet, and that 1,877 includes the 95 square feet, which would be the uh, shed that would be converted to permanent space. And that works out to the ADU being 24.9% of the floor area of the structure, and I believe that, that meets the requirements. Um, we don't believe that since we're not adding any additional doors and we're not adding any additional parking and the house essentially remains the same envelope and same architectural character that it is now, 
and we don't see where it would be any detriment either to traffic or to property values um, or visually in the neighborhood. And it would remain the um, proposed site plan layout, again, on the existing foundation. It would remain as a RA use. Um, any questions? Uh, I have a question for you, Mr. Kaminsky, and I, I think I know the answer, but just for, for clarity's sake. Where the shed sits on the slab, shed's going to be removed, and then stick construction is going to be correct there? And we would tie the roof lines in. Okay. I think, I believe I included some photos at the back. Or there's one, there was one set of photos. If you want to see a photo, I could show that. But it, um, it would tie into the house, mm -hmm. yes. And it, too, would be windows and shingles. And again, that's a pre-existing cement slab. Correct. Underlying that. And it, um, there's a, there's a uh, have a survey. Or actually, you have a survey. Mm -hmm. And it shows on that survey. It says um, existing metal shed on concrete pad. Yeah, I'm not sure it's I'm not sure it's necessary. But have you have you discussed this at all with your neighbors, or uh, did they, did you hear from any neighbors when they sent out the, the notice? We um, actually we got ca we received cards from all the neighbors, uh, return cards, and um, it has been. My wife has discussed it with some of the neighbors, and I think it was they were positive, the ones that responded. Yeah. Uh, there are people that have bought our property directly, and they had no issue. No problem. Okay. I also received uh, calls from two different neighbors who just quite was questioning what was going on. They found out. They said, oh, good. Thank you, Bruce. No issues with them. You show a Portland address. This is your primary residence, is that yes. correct, and your permanent residence? Yeah, we have... Um because it's somewhat rural in Cape Elizabeth, uh, we send most of our mail, our credit cards, etc., to a post office box where it's secure. But you do live at this address? Yes, we time. do. We've lived and, there since 1996. And how? 97. I'm sorry. We've lived there. It's our permanent residence since 1997. 97. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? I have one comment on, on, on the conclusions uh, on number two. Proposal is not create unsanitary conditions by reason of sewage disposal. They did do it. Uh, 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 Albert Frick did a design for a replacement. <clears throat> and instead of it, the code allows that system to be recorded to registry for future uh, installation when the s system in the ground fails. So they've done, they've gone to registry, they registered, brought it back. So I have all the paperwork to take care of any issues that that may happen down the line for the, un for the okay. storage. So it, 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 it's your position then and if they have some sort of septic system failure, the new plan that they've had done should be able to be they put, they enacted come and get any problems. And, and put it in, yeah. And your son already resides with you? Yes. You may have said this. I don't know if I heard. You, you you do have a design for four bedrooms. Yeah, it came in today, and I've got it in the file. If anybody would like to look at it, but it basically uh, allows for uh, one bedroom accessory dwelling unit, and I don't know what happened to it here. Oh, here it is, right here. It allows for a one-bedroom accessory apartment at 120 gallons a day and a three-bedroom um, uh, main unit, which is 390 gallons per day total for the two. So what, like I say, what the code allows is that you can actually record this registry for future expansion, and you can continue to use the system that's in the ground until such time as it fails. Uh, any other questions from the board for the Kaminskys? No? 
Uh, do we hear a motion to close uh, public discussion? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Public discussion is now closed. Um, open the floor to any discussion that members of the board might want to have among themselves. Um, my view of this is that uh, the proposed use uh, falls within the definition of accessory dwelling unit. If you look at the definition, it says a single subordinate dwelling unit, accessory to and wholly contained within a principal building or structure and or attached garage in which, in which a single family dwelling unit is the principal use. This particular property is in the RA zone, and under the RA zone, which is, I believe, 19... 19-6-1, it allows for uh, the following accessory uses, accessory dwelling unit. So that provision of the RA district allows for this use. And then under the conditional use permit, um, it appears that this particular condition, it requires the accessory unit, of course, requires the conditional use permit. Uh, and under the standards for conditional use approval, it requires that we find um, that it um, will not create a hazardous traffic condition, that um, will not create, a, create an unsanitary condition by re reason of sewage disposal, will not adversely affect the value of adjacent properties, and the proposed site plan and layout are compatible with adjacent property uses, and the design and external appearance of any proposed building will constitute an attract, attractive compatible, compatible addition to the neighborhood. Um, Given the fact that this is uh, just a basically a finishing off of existing space, uh, it seems to me that uh, um, the applicant has uh, meets all the uh, six part test under the uh, conditional use standards. I have a question for Mr. Smith. If you would, I have asked this question in the past. I'd like you to comment again on the durability of this uh, conditional use permit upon sale of the property. What was my answer? Before? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, if somebody came in and did the same thing, they could operate under that, that, that form of approval. Um, so it, it would run with the land. It's, so just for clarification, this conditional use permit does transfer with the property upon sale. I, I Is would that love correct? that, yes, uh, if the board and wishes they could put a condition that doesn't do that. And any conditions that we impose upon that remain in effect, if any, Yes. they remain in effect. Yes. And uh, that's the same answers I gave last time? That, uh, that was same That's good. Consistent, anyway. I liked it. I just wanted to, I know the ordinance changes often, and for the benefit of me and my, uh, and for the new board members, I'd like that reviewed. So it does remain in effect, and it is transferable yep. okay. with the same condition. Thank you. And I just had one other question. Are there any limits on the... Um Relate there, to my knowledge, but correct me if I'm wrong, there's no limits on the uh, relationship. There's not a requirement that it's a You've family a, member. A, a close personal relationship, so it can be a friend. Can be a friend. Uh, yeah. I mean, you, the difference between a regular pipe and this one is you, you can't advertise for somebody. Yeah. But you can, you can judge, you know, people could judge a rental fee if they chose to. Um, Either one is, is kind of tough to, to enforce. Uh, it's more of a, um, um, if there's an issue, we address it. Yeah. And when the applicants come to you, you, it, 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 you do make it clear that that is yes. the, the uh, limitations upon yes. it as far as other uses other than what it was applied for, rental, whatever. Yes, sir. So they're, they're fully aware of that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, 
for a motion to uh, close discussion and move to voting? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? All right. Um, we are now going to vote on um, Mr. and Mrs. Kaminsky's uh, application for a conditional use permit. Uh, I'll begin with the findings of fact. Um, one, the appellants are the owners of a property at 8 Gladys Road, tax map U19, lot 53, which is in the residential A district containing 17,290 square feet. All in favor? Two, the use listed is a conditional use in that district, specifically an accessory dwelling unit. Excuse me, the use is listed as a conditional use in that district, specifically an accessory dwelling unit use. All in favor? Mr. Chairman, may I suggest that voting is, is limited to the conclusions? Just to the conclusions? No. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I'll just read the next finding of fact that the existing floor area is 1,877 square feet. All right, conclusions. One, the proposed use will not create hazardous traffic conditions when added to existing or foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. All in favor? Unanimous. Two, the proposed use will not create unsanitary conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air, or other aspects of its design or operation. All in favor? Unanimous. Three, the proposed use will not adversely affect the value of adjacent properties. All in favor? Unanimous. Four, the proposed site plan and layout is compatible with adjacent property uses and with, with the comprehensive plan. All in favor? Unanimous. <coughs> Design and external appearance of any proposed building will constitute an attractive and compatible addition to its neighborhood, although it need not have a similar design, appearance, or architecture. All in favor? Unanimous. Uh, do I hear a motion to uh, approve the application for an accessory dwelling unit? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Unanimous. I, congratulations. I suggest that the conditions of approval. Thank you. Absolutely. And uh, there are conditions of, first of all, congratulations, Mr. and Mrs. Kaminsky. Um, there are, there are, it's our pleasure. There are four conditions of approval that I'm going to read into the record here, just so uh, everyone's on the same page. <clears throat> one, there should be one dedicated parking space for the accessory dwelling unit. Two, no home occupation or home business is permitted now or in the future. Three, single family and accessory dwelling unit shall be held in the same ownership. And four, an attested copy of this conditional use permit shall be filed in the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds within 90 days of this approval. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, are there any communications? I have one. Uh, included in your packet was, was a uh, uh, information about Jim Waltz on the council uh, heading up. Thank you. Thank you. A uh, committee to study uh, communications and, and how best to handle handle that, uh, giving everybody a chance to speak and how we whether we set at this dais or we go lower and at the same level. So what he wanted to do is is is, is uh, seek any input from from not only the citizens but uh, but the board. So either on a on a on a full board, uh, whatever the word is, or single. So if you have something that you, that you would like to share with uh, Mr. Walsh, uh, feel free to uh, contact him and he'll certainly uh, bring that forward. They're reviewing the question of what's the proper format for these meetings? Uh, it could be the, the format, yeah, it could be how we communicate, whether we have you know, have something online where people can, like they had before, where they can put in comments. Um, it's just the whole idea is to, to have open communications and give the citizens a chance to be able to air their the issues. Uh, How did it, when you say before, was there a process before where they could communicate? There was a process on, on the website that, that's uh, been on hiatus for about 
I guess a year now, whereby you can comment on any anything. And any pending application. That became a problem because there was too many things that were put on there that that somebody or, or some board would have to defend. Uh, so it, it went off in the kind of the wrong di direction. So they, they're looking for other ways to, for, to allow for communication without getting into that tug of war situation. So it's, uh, you know, like I say, if you've got any comments at all, that, that any, anything that you can share that, to make the uh, communications work, then feel free to call Jim. Well, I don't know. Do we want to comment at all as a panel on that? My own view on it is that I think it is important for people to, you know, th there's a process here, and I prefer to see people come and comment if they want to comment. Um, I really think people flying off emails, you know, people, when you're sitting at your home computer <laughs> and you're having a bad moment, <laughs> Things can get flown out on an yeah, email that's exactly what was happening. That, that really don't amount to much, um, or they can't. They you don't want. They, they don't have a lot of thought behind them, and sometimes they gain, gain greater significance than we should afford them. Um, and I just think it's important to have people come and face each other and talk it through, and you get better thought, more thoughtful um, communication. Be, between people. Um, so I don't know my own personal view, and I would hope it's the panel's view that we should encourage the town council to maintain the formality of the process. But in this board, because of the nature of the board, quasi municipal, uh, all, all meetings are, are, uh, are posted as public hearings. So there's always that opportunity to speak, whereas some boards. Uh, They'll have meetings that's not public hearings, and they won't allow the public to speak until they do make the public hearing. So that's like one of the things that they'd be looking at to see if there's, there's a way to, to, to make, improve that, because that, you know, that could be a problem for somebody who really is wanting to speak and can't because right. it's not a public hearing. So, right. um, you know, that's just one thing of, of many. I think it's been primarily at the <clears throat> My sense is that primarily at the work, it's workshop levels, you know, where they have a workshop on a specific school board or, you know, some other issue, and people don't hear about the workshop. Mm -hmm. It's about a topic that, geez, I wish I'd known about that. I would have shown up. And, that, and they're looking at ways to get that word out, I, too. I think the formal, you know, boards, you know, where you have that, you have to kind of make a presentation, and I mean, here it's, I think you said it's reasonably straightforward, but, but I think where you have these, these sidebar, you know, workshop, workshops, that's, that's where it's problematic. Right, and in this situation where you're legally required to notify all your coverage and everything like that, it's, it's foul, they didn't know that it was going to occur, so. I, I agree with that. I mean, if we're adjudicating applications, I don't think we could consider emails or other things that were posted on a website. We would be limited to considering what's presented here live. But if we were to, say, have a workshop and consider policy changes, then it might make sense to have some way of communicating. But I don't, you know, we don't have one planned and we haven't had one in a while. So I'm not sure it makes sense to really communicate that to the council right now. But if we were, you know, if we were to say, um, have a workshop about revising the ordinances, then then I would think we would want to solicit other other types of communications with the public. Any other comments? Uh, we'll hear a motion to adjourn. Uh, I have a different comment, if I may. Uh, I'd like to thank our recording secretary, Ms. Weatherby, for uh, a, a job well done uh, on these uh, minutes. I think to take a lengthy board meeting and subsequent discussion and turn it into a seven-page detailed minutes is quite a feat and, and quite a bit of talent involved. So our thanks to the, my thanks to the recording secretary.
think that the rest of the board um, would join in that. I wasn't here last last time, but reading the uh, the minutes, I got a very good sense of what happened. So to echo what Dr. Chapman says and say thank you. Yeah, that's a tough job, but it's a good job. Anything further, gentlemen? Motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Second. All in favor? Adjourn. Thank you all. Thank you, gentlemen. Glad you might.